Hello, I'm Martin Looker from Silicon Labs. Welcome to this quick start video where I'll show you how to use a Raspberry Pi as an open thread border router. You'll be able to create a MATA network, add devices to it and control them. This particular setup is most useful during development as it gives you full control over the MATA network. Now that we have a MATA light, we need to create a network for it to join. To do this, we'll need an open thread border router or OTBR. I'm going to form this from two devices. First of all, I have an MG24 Explorer kit board. This will be used as a radio coprocessor, so this will provide the thread side of the network. I'm going to connect the Explorer kit board to a Raspberry Pi over USB, and the Raspberry Pi will have the firmware in it to allow it to operate on my network and create an open thread border router in conjunction with the radio coprocessor. I'll begin by programming the Explorer kit as an open thread radio coprocessor. In addition to the RCP binary, a bootloader binary is also required. If you want to skip the creation of these two binaries and get set up as quickly as possible, you can download pre-built binaries from the Matter Artifacts page and use Simplicity Commander to program them. There are links to these resources in the video description. For this video, I'll show you how to create the projects in Simplicity Studio in case you need to examine or work on the code. I'm in the Simplicity Studio launcher perspective with my XG24 Explorer kit board connected and selected. On the Example Projects and Demos tab, I've searched for 1MB and the example project I'm looking for is the bootloader SOC internal storage single image on a 1MB device. I can click the create button to begin the process of creating the bootloader project. In the new project wizard window, I prefer to append the board number to the project name in case I create the project for a different device in the future. Next, clicking the finish button will create the project files in the file system and Simplicity Studio. Once created, you'll be returned to the Simplicity IDE perspective with an open README and the project files will be available in the Project Explorer pane. To build the project, select it at the top level in the Project Explorer and then click the Build button with a hammer icon on the toolbar. The build progress is shown in the Console tab and any errors or warnings will be under the Problems tab. Once built, a binaries folder will appear in the Project Explorer. Selecting and right-clicking the .s37 file, you can select Flash to Device to open up the Flash Programmer. To ensure that my Flash is clean, I'm going to click the Erase button, and then I can use the Program button to transfer the bootloader binary into Flash. Once complete, I can close the Flash Programmer window with the Close button. Next, we need to create the open thread RCP binary that will act as the thread interface for the Raspberry Pi in forming the open thread border router. This follows the same process used to create and program the bootloader. Back in the launcher perspective, I have the Explorer kit board connected and selected, and I'm on the Example Projects and Demos tab. I've filtered the list for OT-RCP and we can find the open thread RCP example here and click the create button to begin creating the project. In the wizard, I've appended the board number to the project name and I'm going to click finish to start creating the project. Next, I can select the top level of the RCP project and click the build button. The final step is to locate and select the .s37 file, then right click it and select flash to device. I'm just going to click the program button this time. I'm not using the erase button as the RCP binary needs to sit alongside the bootloader binary in the flash memory. Next we need to program some firmware into the Raspberry Pi so it can operate as our open thread border router. The starting point for this is the Silicon Labs Matter Software Artifacts page. There's a link in the video description. On this page, you'll need to locate the Matter Hub Raspberry Pi image section and download the zip file, which you'll need to extract before continuing. 
This page is also where you can find links to the pre-built binaries for the RCP and the bootloaders. Binaries for Matter accessory devices, like lights and switches, are also available from this page. While my image is downloading, I'm also going to get hold of Raspberry Pi Imager. This is a software utility we can use to program the image onto a micro SD card for use in the Raspberry Pi. It's available from Raspberry's website, and I just need to download for my operating system. So I've installed the Raspberry Pi Imager utility and have it running on my PC. I've also unzipped the image that I downloaded from GitHub. So to get this burned onto my card, I need to first of all use the Choose OS button and select Use Custom. And from here, I can select the downloaded image from my local file system. Next, I need to choose the drive where my micro SD card is located. And then I can hit right to burn the image onto the drive. So I have everything programmed ready to use. It's worth a quick run through of what I have on my desk here to I'm going to use to form this system. This device here is a mini Wi-Fi Ethernet router. So my PC is connected to the network formed by this router. This router is connected over Ethernet to my Raspberry Pi OTBR using the green cable that you see here. Uh, so this is forming the Wi-Fi Ethernet IP side of the OTBR. And then the orange USB lead goes into the Explorer kit, which is going to act as our radio coprocessor. So this will be providing thread capabilities to the Raspberry Pi. And then finally, we have the ProKit board that we programmed up as a light and the uh, LED zero here is flashing uh, briefly, indicating that it's advertising over Bluetooth and looking for a network to join. I'll be operating the OTBR on the command line over an SSH connection. So to do that, you're going to need an SSH client. For this video, I'll be using the PuTTY client that's available from PuTTY.org. So let's use PuTTY to connect to our OpenThread border router. In PuTTY, all you really need to do is put the IP address of your Raspberry Pi in here and click the Open button. You can find the IP address by checking the settings and the configuration of the connected devices in your router. The first time you open a PuTTY connection to a device, you'll be prompted to accept a security key. So the default username to log in is Ubuntu. And the default password for a newly programmed Raspberry Pi is also Ubuntu. However, the first time you log in, you'll be prompted to change this. So I'm going to make a new password to apply. And PuTTY will then close down and will need to be restarted for you to log back in successfully. So I can now log in with my new password. And I'm now at the command line, ready to start interacting with the Matter system. We're going to interact with the Matter system by the use of a command tool called Matter Tool. Let's just issue the, a basic Matter Tool help command. And this will give you some information on the kind of commands that you can issue with Matter. So if you've done any Matter development elsewhere, maybe from the main GitHub repository, you may have come across a chip tool command line option. Matter tool is basically a wrapper around that. And in some cases, you can wrap multiple chip tool commands up into a single matter tool command. So this is really the command line we're going to use to operate with the system. First thing we need to do is form a matter network. And the way we do that is by issuing the matter tool start thread command to the Raspberry Pi. This will go through the process of forming a thread network. And when this completes, it will output what's called a data set. So this is really data that defines the network. You can retrieve a data set from a device that's running by issuing the matter tool get thread data set. Now that I have my matter network up and running formed by my open thread border router, I want to add my light into the network. So as a reminder, LED zero that's flashing briefly here is indicating the device is advertising on Bluetooth looking for a network to join. 
When our OTBR forms the Bluetooth connection, that will flash more rapidly. And during that time, it will exchange network credentials for the thread part of the network. Then finally, the light will join the thread network using those credentials and LED zero will be on permanently. And the way that we add our device to the network is we issue a matter tool BLE thread command. And as we can see, the light is flashing more rapidly now as the thread data is exchanged. And then finally, the, the light is lit permanently, indicating that the light is now part of the network. And a key thing to note here is when a node is joined, it's assigned a node ID. In this case, I've been assigned 20455. It's important to make a note of this number because it may be necessary to use it in later commands if you want to control a specific device. So the state of the light is represented by LED1, uh, the LED on the left. And to turn a light on, we can use the matter tool on command. And the minus N option that I've put here allows me to specify the node ID that I want to send this command to. If you omit this, it will send it to the most recently added node, but let's keep it in for consistency. So we can see that the LED has lit up and also on the Pro Kit, the, the LCD will display little lines around the light icon. To turn it off, we can uh, repeat a similar process, but this time we use the matter tool off command. And we see the light showing off. There's also a toggle command that can be used to toggle the light between on and off. And we can toggle it back off again. So we now have a small network up and running using a Raspberry Pi as an open thread border router. You can add additional devices, including different device types in exactly the same way. For further information on setting up your Raspberry Pi, see the documentation page shown here. Thanks for watching.